Hey, Math 43, I had a question coming out of Chapter 8, 117, and here we were told that an insurance company is interested in the percent of drivers who buckle up before riding, and they want to design a study where the minimum, uh, um, they want to design a study, and they say, what is the minimum number you would need to do a survey to be 95% confident that the population proportion is estimated to within 0.03. So that's a lot I wanna unpack. The first thing I, I see that I wanna talk about is that phrase, minimum number. So when you hear that, they're asking you to come up with your sample size. So what is your end value? That's what that's asking you to do here, all right? The other thing I see is that I'm 95% confident. I'm gonna keep that in the back of my mind, and then it says estimate within 0.03. So let's go back and think about what our variable would be, right? Let's say you're gonna even have a sample of 30. What were you gonna ask these folks, right? If, I, if you were in this study, what are they gonna ask you? Are they gonna ask you if you were on Facebook today, if you tweeted today, if you drank coffee? No, they're gonna ask you, hey, do you buckle up before writing? Right, so this variable, right, whether or not driver buckles up, that's a categorical variable, right? And anytime we have a categorical variable, we're gonna turn the frequency count, the number of successes, into a relative frequency or a proportion. And that's what's putting us in proportion land. You could hear it in the fact that they actually said, hey, we're interested in the percent of drivers who buckle up. But this is another way to get into proportion land. And why I think it's important to talk about this is because if we hear that estimate within 0.03, that is talking about a margin of error. And that as a decimal being 0.03 is 3%. So I want a 3% margin of error. All right, now I say, I hear that I'm 95% confident. So if I'm in proportion land, I'm gonna be on the Z, uh, I'm gonna need a Z star critical value. So my Z star here will be 1.96, right? And I'm gonna solve for this sample size. So we're gonna use this inequality, all right? And we know that since I wasn't given a sample proportion, I'm gonna default to 50%. This gives us what we call a conservative estimate meaning we'll get a sample size that might be a little larger than we need, but it'll guarantee 3% margin of error. All right, so I'm gonna plug in 50% for my P prime. Like I said, I'm gonna plug in 1.96 for my Z, and I'm gonna plug in 3% for my margin of error, and that's what you see me doing down here. And when I get done with that, I get this N has to be greater than or equal to 1067.11. But N has to be a whole number. So I, I get questions like this. Well, should it be 1067? or should it be 1068, all right? And the thing is, if you do 1067, your margin of error is gonna be a little bit greater than 3%, all right? Not a ton greater, but it is greater than 3%, and that's not what the question wants from us. If we do 1068, because again, it has to be greater than or equal to 1067, well, 1068 is the next largest whole number. This is gonna have a margin of error that is less than 3%. So we do need to include that extra person, which is why you see my answer being 1068. And then part B says, hey, if we wanna be more confident, what are we gonna wind up doing? Well, if you wanna be more confident, right? Confidence intervals actually increase the width of your sample, uh, excuse me, of your confidence interval. So let me put this, the co if the, con whoa, that's a circle. <laughs> if your confidence level increases, then your margin of error increases. All right, that's a, that's a consequence of that. So if you want to keep your margin of error, let's say you're like, I don't want it to increase, right? You want it to stay at 3%, then you're going to have to increase the sample size to counterbalance that. So if you, that's supposed to be an up arrow. If you increase the sample size, then you bring down the margin of error. So if you want to maintain a 3% margin of error, but you want to increase the sample, excuse me, increase the confidence level, you're gonna to have to increase the sample size. Ooh, I think I wrote my arrows wrong. Sorry guys, let me make sure I get these correct. If you increase sample size, you decrease margin of error. So let me, let me reiterate, if I want to increase my confidence level, that would increase my margin of error, which is a bad thing. So to counterbalance that, I've gotta increase my sample size so that I can maintain that 3% margin of error. All right, thanks so much everyone, bye.